Good morning on this fine Friday morning and we're favored to have with us somebody who has been very controversial in many respects because a lot of Kenyans don't understand what happened to Embu County Speaker Karuki Mate. But besides that, there is a lot to, to say about Embu County with the refusal, or rather, <laughs> how would I call it, the continuing uh, to be in office of Governor Martin Wambora. All that and more this morning on Power Breakfast interview. Karibu speaker. I thank you, Sanandu. No, you and I have come a long way, so I don't know whether this is going to be a friendly chat or... <laughs> <laughs> you want to declare your interest? I must uh, declare my interest. Uh, <laughs> that, uh, uh, Karuki and I worked together on the uh, No Campaign, referendum campaign in 2005, uh, the Secretariat, and we did a great job yeah, and beat those guys of the Yes Campaign. Without Governor. money? Without money. Yeah. But things have since changed. Now Why speaking. you pro bono? Uh, not really. Our campaign was not very well <laughs> oiled. <laughs> <laughs> we were struggling at that time. Uh, yes, yeah. but uh, nevertheless. So, how is Embu? Uh, uh, since all this drama unfolded, uh, are things back with the county assembly running smoothly? Or uh, is there still trouble going on? Well, thank you, David. Uh, <coughs> first, thank you for the invite. But then to deal with your question directly. I think there has never been s anything wrong with Embu. There have been issues about individuals, but Embu has remained a great county. It still is. And um, every home has its own challenges. Yes. Uh, the challenges do not necessarily mean that the home ceases to be a home. It is Embu still a beautiful Embu home. Embu is still the, the <laughs> land of opportunities. Uh, maybe let me put it this way. Who is the governor of Embu? I think politics aside, David, uh, the governor of Embu County is Martin Wambora. Um, he is the governor, notwithstanding the fact that he's been impeached uh, twice and the Senate has upheld uh, those two impeachments. But we have to appreciate and recognize judicial authority. If the judiciary comes on board and says, look, something went wrong in the procedure in a manner the way the impeachment was undertaken and consequently person who was governor remains governor then we we can on, we can only challenge that in a higher court the but information we, we have from one senator who was here the other day from um, uh, from Kemba, Wamatangi. he was in the impeachment committee yes. since the MCA is in Embu yes. I went to the Supreme Court to challenge that judicial decision and that the Senate is going to ask to be enjoined enjoined in that application in the Supreme Court is, there is that the happen? situation that decision has not been taken because it is not a decision that the speaker can take. Uh, it is not the decision that an individual member can take. If I receive a petition from the membership of the assembly that we appeal the decision of the court in Kerugoya and, 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 and the appeal court again in Nyeri, then we will go ahead at the appeal. But so far, we are trying to learn how to run away from much litigation. You, you must appreciate that Embu has gone through a lot of litigations. I think since since uh, April last year, we've had 14 cases in court, and the, 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 the legal bills are running high. And sadly, in all these cases, there is not a single case where the county assembly was a complainant or a petitioner or an applicant. And we don't think we want to go that route of uh, wanting to pursue matters in court. I think uh, we, we want to leave it as a Senate problem. If Senate feels aggrieved by the decision of the Court of Appeal, so be it. Senate has refused to hear uh, or see any representation from uh, the governor. How is that being received by the county? I, w I would not purport to speak for the Senate. Obviously, their decision and their pronouncements are informed by certain schools of thought. But the point that is emerging uh, overall is that the legislatures are feeling aggrieved by the attempt by the judiciary to encroach into the pr province of uh, legislatures. And there is a general feeling that the oversight role, <coughs> the oversight responsibility of legislatures is being undermined at the judiciary. And um, Obviously, one would be tempted to understand where Senate is coming from, because if the decision of the courts was, was, was to, be, to be upheld, 
uh, with finality, yes. then effectively it means that no other governor would be impeached. Uh, even the president would never be impeached because then uh, the, the impeachment processes would proceed and then the courts would come and dissect the evidence and the processes and return persons who have been impeached back to office. It would end up being a circus. I think that's the statement that the but Senate... Uh, you speak in uh, your, your, your speech seems to uh, confirm the court court's finding that you are not in respect of its authority and hence you've been found guilty of contempt for having uh, uh, ignored a court order, a stay order against the proceedings to impeach uh, Governor Ambora. What is the fact? What are the facts? Clear the air here. Well, uh, quite clearly, the merits and the demerits of the case uh, against myself and the clerk uh, may not be discussed uh, live on in studio because there are still matters active before court. Right. But the bottom line is that. Uh, the clerk and myself respect judicial authority. Yes. And we respect orders of the court. But of course, an impression has been created. Let's, let's put it <coughs> this way. For people who don't understand what the issue is, because yeah. recently the court has found you to have been in contempt yes. of it. What is the claim? What is it that is at hand here? And what, okay, what is it that the court has said against you? And what is it that you have said back to it without getting into the uh, with merits? Without of getting side. into the merits and the demerits, the yes. bottom line is the, the, the petitioner, the person who applied for contempt proceedings against us, has determined that the speaker and the clerk can be punished for an action of the assembly. Right. The claim is that the clerk and myself were in a capacity to, st to stop impeachment proceedings. Yes. against the governor. Obviously, in, in our hand, I, I wish it was possible, David, because then uh, it would also give me a very powerful tool that the day the, 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 the MCS wants to impeach me, I will stop my own impeachment. <laughs> but I, I, wish, I wish it could be understood that yes. a speaker has no capacity. Let's get the facts right. Yes. When the impeachment proceedings came up, yes. Governor Wambora went to court to seek a, a, an injunction against the assembly yes. impeaching or proceeding with the procedures for impeachment. Yes. The claim is that that order was served to you yes. as speaker in your capacity as a person who presides over that assembly. Is that, isn't that, and those the facts, and that therefore you ignored that order. And the, and the impeachment proceedings, and the impeachment proceedings proceeded against <coughs> a standing court order. What that are the facts? Th that has been the claim. But okay. if you look at the, the, the pleadings by the petitioners, what you will uh, pick out is that um, the court order as issued by a judge in Kirwaya were actually served on uh, a clerk, uh, um <coughs> a legal clerk who was barely two days old in the assembly at 7.04 p.m. in the night when we had already commenced and uh, dispensed with the impeachment proceedings for that day. In fact, what was remaining was only 14. Unfortunately, by the time we were coming to conclude the proceedings on the next normal sitting day, we still had not received the orders. Of course, there was a lot of talk in town that there were court orders and all that. Yes, and but I'm sorry that no we, are, we, we appear to have to be also be encroaching on the merits and the demerits. Yeah. But then, you know, it, will, it put us in a very difficult position when uh, the proceedings are active in the assembly. Unless a member moves a motion to cause an adjournment on the basis of an existing court order or on the basis of some other known reason, a reason known by in the studying orders, I, the speaker has no powers to rise up in his seat and say, and look guys, stop where you have the hold proceedings. the process and, you know, it, it is <laughs> not anticipated. <laughs> it is actually protected okay. very well by the law. All right. Yeah. Now let's move out of that. But the last question on that is this. So the court ma found you in contempt. That's and right. What is the current status? What is the status of those, of that, case. Of that matter? You have appealed against it or you what is the current situation? We, appe we, are <laughs> we appealed uh, against uh, that finding. Of, uh, by the Kerawea Court in Nyeri, the Nyeri Court of Appeal. The Nyeri Court of Appeal, in a hard-hitting judgment, uh, uh, determined that uh, we were actually in contempt. Right. So we have moved to the Supreme Court. 
Okay. Because we think the matters up for determination are not about myself and the clerk. Yes. There are matters that are going to affect um, all the other assemblies. There are matters that uh, even the Speaker of the Senate and the Speaker of the National Assembly have a reason to worry about because okay. they set up residence. Okay. That tomorrow, even uh, a resident magistrate can actually issue orders in junting Parliament and in junting the Senate yes. from, 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 from proceeding with matters before them. Okay. Yeah. In the same matter, before we work at that, the, uh, there was an order uh, issued by the High Court against the impeachment of uh, Wambora by uh, confirmation impeach, uh, of impeachment by the Senate. Yes. In the first attempt uh, yes. uh, 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 of um, attempted impeachment. Yes. What what were the circumstances there? Just uh, for clarity, and then we get out of that. I, I think um, again, did the Senate proceed against an order that had the been issued, or it had not order, been served? The order had been extracted from Kirogoya, stopped both the Assembly and the Senate yeah. from proceeding with the impeachment uh, uh, business. Okay. Um, when we communicated to Senate our decision, the Senate uh, chose to proceed notwithstanding because at the point the orders were served on the Senate, I still think the Senate had the capacity to to probably take judicial take notice of the of the of the, of the, of the, the Senate acting the same way you have argued. The matter came too late. We had already what commenced yeah. once the we train has started. left. You can't, so you can't but stop. But the same argument. <coughs> but the bottom line now is is the contempt proceedings were preferred against the, the small the small fish. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you have gone for the big fish <laughs> as well. You the meat that can fit in the mouth. <laughs> and, I, and I think we, we are likely to be used to, to drive a message home. Okay. All right. Let's get out of that. So otherwise, we'll be in contempt of court again. Yeah, but uh, but uh, there is no order before in which we are contempt here. Yes. What is it? What is the relationship between the MCAs and the governor? Are they working in tandem? Muteki, that thing has continued to worry me because I would have expected, you know, from January when the first impeachment was undertaken and this is now October, you would have expected that bridges have been built, yeah. uh, relationships have been mended and all that. Unfortunately, things have grown from bad to worse. To worse. Uh, if, uh, if you remember, the first impeachment had the support of 22 members. The second impeachment and the support of uh, 23 members. Now, as we speak, the 23 have been joined by another. Now they are 24. So you can imagine if another process was to be undertaken, there would be another 24 members. And I, st I still think um, our governor has an opportunity to reach out. In fact, I have said, uh, David, if, if the speaker of the county assembly is the, is the big devil, then just ignore me and reach out to the MCAs for purposes of moving Embu forward. Because I, I cannot be the reason why Embu will not move forward. Ignore me. And um, if I also become... Ignore you means what? Ignore me if I am the, if I am the big person. If, the, if I'm Because an impression has been created that all this mess is because uh, we have a bad speaker in office. Then why don't you offer to resign? But I'm not bad. So the person who thinks... <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so uh, wha wha why do you want to uh, absolve yourself of any uh, problem in this whole uh, tango? I am not an angel, David. Yes. And uh, I am not saying that I am perfect or very good. I am a politician, and that's the bottom line. But also, Embu is not mine. And Embu does not belong to one individual. Yes. So, so that if one individual is a problem in Embu County, then the other leaders should be able to team up together and move Embu forward. The problem we are having, uh, Mutegi, is a situation where the executive in Embu has kind of isolated itself. And I, and I have kept asking this question with all due respect. Yes. And this is not just for Embu, but for several other counties. When you find a governor who will not work with his deputy, who will not work with the speaker, who will not work with the MCS, who will not work with the senator, who will not work with the elected members of National Assembly, then are we saying that this governor is a god, that uh, he is so right and everybody else is wrong? Because that can only happen with God. So that is your p description of the problem in Embu. The chief executive, the governor, does not cope or you know, work with the rest of the elected leaders. Is that your conclusion? Uh, it is my 
humble, your, your humble analysis, analysis of the situation. Yes, sir, but but, but yes. I thought the governor and the senator have no problem. Well, uh, that's a thought. <laughs> Although <laughs> the reality on the ground. We, 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 so there, there are some claims, I don't know whether they can be verified, when the original uh, uh, impeachment was being cooked, yes. it was cooked in Mombasa yes. with the tacit approval or direct uh, support of the senator. Is that uh, the story? Let me tell you, Muteki. When the first notice of impeachment was, uh, was done, I actually went out of my way to try to help uh, the governor. And there has been an impression created that the motion was cooked in Mombasa. The mm. truth of the matter is that the Mombasa trip was actually organized by the governor and myself. Mm. Mm -hmm. There has been a claim that the senator funded the Mombasa yes, trip. Yes, we have heard that. Trip. Yes. Mm -hmm. Nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, Mutegi, the hotel where the MCAs were, the bills were paid through county government checks, mm -hmm. authorized by the governor. And the intention was to bring members together so that before the motion is moved, yes. the governor would come and have an opportunity with the members of the assembly to understand the deep-seated issues that were resulting in this impeachment. Right. And we had gone on a Friday, in the, in the, in the, in the, and, and the arrangement was the governor would join us on Monday. Unfortunately, before Monday, the Sunday before the day the governor was supposed to come, and he handed an air ticket. We saw a few members being uh, f flown back to Nairobi. Actually, to precisely 12 of to 11 of them were flown back to Nairobi. Another one had already been in Nairobi. And the scheme was, instead of reaching out to build bridges, the scheme was to try to deny the MCAs the numbers to impeach, because they needed 22. So without 12, with 12 away, then that would have meant 21, and the motion would have collapsed. Now, unfortunately, uh, reaching Embu, one of the 12 jumped back to the 21, <laughs> and, and they, they, they reached the numbers. Yes. I think that's where now the names of Lenny Kefuti had come and started coming in. And I think, to be, to be honest, I, I, uh, Lenny Kefuti has never been my political ally, but also, come and buy and buy, mm. come and zuri and zuri. Yeah. Lenny actually attempted to stop the first impeachment, and he was told off by the MCS. Mm. He did several reconciliations. And he meetings. absconded in the uh, Senate impeachment proceedings anyway. No, he was hurt. He was hurt because he had actually organized uh, two, two reconciliation meetings, which MCS snapped. They said they would not attend. Yeah. yeah. There has been the contest that... Uh, all right, so how about the governor and the deputy? What do you mean they are not able to work together? How are they working now? What is the chemistry like? If indeed... Some people, the Senate recognize the deputy governor, Dorothy Nditi. What, what, what is the absence of chemistry? But we haven't seen any physicals there, so we presume things are going on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so, you but you but uh, is there friction? But I mean, but tell but us, because you see this happening and you're a member of that county and county. There, there is uh, evident friction. The only thing I can uh, uh, commend the deputy governor for, for, especially as at now, is there was a time a few months ago when there was now open, open uh, altercations between the governor and the deputy governor, and I think it has gone down. Mm. And um, I think that is the first step in the healing process. Yeah. And, and in terms of because it's so 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 fashionable to talk about the past without talking about where we are going. Yeah. I think. Um, the temperatures are going down. It's only that they, s they, f they keep getting stopped by unnecessary moves that, mm. that can actually be avoided, you know, especially when, um, when, you, when, you want, when you want to reach out. Yeah. You reach out honestly. You reach out like a gentleman. You don't reach out in, in, in respect of Embu, for example, the, the group of 23. They keep complaining that a few of them are being caught at night and being offered uh, goodies and uh, opportunities in return, in return for, for, uh, no, for, for, for support. Yeah. And I think uh, it is still not too late. To the, the there is a, a where question. Yeah. Where, where does the, what's the role of clan or uh, ethnicity in this? When you talk about 23, is it, is it uh, general in the county or is it based on clan, Bere and Embu? 
I know that that's a um, uh, <coughs> what Tegibi has been that that argument has been uh, floated uh, severely that the past people who impeached the governor were, were MCs from uh, from Bere. That is not true because the membership of that assembly is so balanced that it is impossible for one 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 tribal arm of the county to rise up against another. The people who impeached uh, uh, the governor comprise memberships from both Embu and the Bere communities, even Darakas, even Kambas, even Kikuyus, because Embu is not just... Yeah. Uh, but uh, Karuki, isn't it a fact that uh, the election and these offices are held uh, as a compromise, as a negotiated settlement to assure equal representation or inclusion in the county government, that it was agreed the senator be this community, the governor be from that community, in fact, the speaker be from this community, the deputy governor be from that community. And therefore, because of that matrix and agreement, uh, and gentleman's agreement, you cannot upset the apple cut now and say the governor has to go because the community that uh, he comes from deserves and must continue to keep that position. Quite true. There has been <coughs> an allusion to that kind of, uh, of a compromise. But you know that is not a political reality. And I see it's not a polit political reality because the governor and the senator do not come from the same political party. In fact, there were, there were near competitors in the last election. The, the senator is from the APK. Yes. The governor is from, uh, from uh, TNA. So unless you are saying there was a, a, a meeting somewhere between TNA and APK where we were saying, look, uh, not to studying that the senator is from, uh, from uh, the a APK. Yeah. And uh, it's from Berry. He'll be elected. The TNA senator for Embu was uh, from Manyata constituency, which is in Embu. The TNA governor was Wambora. And uh, somehow, uh, I don't know, for political reasons, we yes. were not able to get our candidate uh, sailing through. So I, I, think, I think those saying that um, the, the, the impeachments and the, the issues of governor, senator, issues of tribes mm. are missing the point. But I want to ask you a question, uh, David. If for argument's sake, we agree and we accept that it was an arrangement. The governor is Embu, the senator is Mbere. So is that now a license for whoever is governor to ex uh, expend resources as he wishes, to think he's untouchable, to think he, he has a free license to do as he wishes? Can we take cover under the ethnic card and say, look, no questions? Can we say that? Or shall we be fair to the people of Embu? Yeah, but to what extent, uh, <coughs> uh, no, the Speaker, yeah. is the governor able to do things unchecked? Because there is a county assembly. Yeah. I mean, this uh, whole claim that the governor can spend or do things without regard to uh, procedure and the law or the law, <coughs> yeah. where, on what, what is it founded on? There's a county assembly which approves the budget, yes. which also checks the expenditure. Yes. Are you saying this institution is not functional? You see, one of the instruments that the county assembly has been bestowed with by the law and the constitution is to deal with the any element in the executive that is not living up to its mandate. And one, 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 one such instrument is impeachment. The county assembly has powers to deal with county executive members who are not living up to their mandate. When that instrument is interfered with, either by way of political um, arrangements or by way of uh, court orders like has recently happened, then what we have done is we have given blank checks to the executives to do as they wish. And nobody likes being asked questions, Makari. And I, I asked uh, the chairman of the Council of Governors the other day when he appeared, uh, we had a session with the county assemblies. The, the question was, uh, was similar. The governors and the executives do not want to be questioned by the MCS. They do not want to be questioned by the Senate. They don't want to be questioned by anybody, even by their peers. So who will question them? Who will uh, safeguard the utilization of resources? Who will be the people's watchman? I think it's the $1 million question that still begs for an answer. But who stops the MCS from questioning the county executives and the governor? Uh, you, you must have been following news, I think, two days ago. Uh, the High Court in Bungoma 
has uh, declared a section of the law that gives yeah. MCAs the, yes. pub, the, the power to impeach, to impeach uh, executive. executives yeah. uh, as unconstitutional. Of course it is true, sometimes MCAs have gone overboard and misapplied the impeachment instruments either as a means of coercion or means of certain personal cause. But at the end of the day, that instrument can only be probably remolded to safeguard it from uh, abuse. But it is still a powerful instrument that is a necessity in a presidential system like ours. I've seen my bro uh, speaker also there protesting and saying that the speakers are going to challenge this appeal against the decision. Is that uh, consensus already reached? No, that is one school of thought. But they are saying if uh, what, what is good for the goose is good for the gutter. And what, uh, some <laughs> what some speakers are saying is, oh, if it is so unconstitutional to impeach a CEC member, then some speakers are also saying then it is also very unconstitutional. Section 11 of the County Government Act is also unconstitutional, the one that provides for the impeachment of a speaker. So, uh, really well, the speaker in Kitale County <laughs> has been impeached and gone on to appeal against that as well. But you see, the courts have returned him, and he's yes. my peer, and yeah. I have every reason to stand with him. But look at what has happened. He's been denied entry into the assembly. He's been denied uh, access to his uh, instruments of power. Yes. So it's a circus. It's yeah. something that needs to be set. Uh, that law needs to be settled once and for all. So that there's the jurisprudence it's in that area is clear. It's, it's clear. clear. Yeah. But now, again, yeah. that is a problem. Yeah. How it looks like, why do you as speakers represent the counties, uh, uh, MCS? Wouldn't you be, uh, are your interests synonymous? In what way are we representing MCS? Uh, for example, why are you in the same uh, uh, forum? Because a speaker is an MCA. A speaker is a member of the country. Is a member of the country. Well, assembly. just like the speaker of the national assembly yes, is a yes, member yes, of the parliament. Yes, yes, yes. yes. But are your interests? But we are elected by, by the MCA. Yes, and we are supposed to check. MCAs. You are yeah. supposed to preside over the assembly, but yes. also uh, provide uh, certain checks against the excesses of those. Uh, 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 MCS, which because who of who going to the bed, That's the question. which of because of going to bed, mm. there is no check against that. We are in collusion. You know, checking MCS has been happening. If you sit with the speakers, they will tell you of some of the things they go through. And uh, without exposing myself to possible <laughs> consequences, <laughs> which I'm afraid <laughs> <laughs> are you and yes. yeah. people need to understand where speakers are coming from. Uh, for example, I, I, will, I, I, will, I will disclose this. Yes. Uh, Wambora and myself uh, sat in my office in the second impeachment and we discussed avenues of uh, salvaging the situation. And I told him, uh, Wambora, I am willing to take your bullet on this. I am willing to come in and see how we can salvage the situation on one condition. Give me f a formula of saving myself from the MCAs when eventually they turn against me. He couldn't. Because obviously if there was a formula, he would have applied it to himself. <laughs> so you don't want to <laughs> overstep, to cross the line as a speaker and curtail the, ma the powers and the mandates of the county assembly members. <laughs> and also expose yourself to joblessness. So, in fact, uh, the truth of the matter is that yeah. all of you are in a, in a bush, hyenas, mm. each one can devour the other. Mm. You can't protect, your, you can't stop this MCS from doing anything un, un, uh, 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 illegal or excessive because they'll turn against you and yeah. impeach you. So it's a man-eat-man -man society no, that we are in, in that county government. No, to, to, to yes. be to no let, let's be honest to the county assemblies. I think... Uh, Quite a number of my colleagues, uh, speakers, have actually stood firm. I, I will be honest, and uh, the MCs from Embu will be a witness on this. The number of motions that I have is, I've received seeking to impeach county executive members, I think in total there are about four motions seeking to remove from office CEC members by impeachment. But you know, as a speaker, you don't behave the way a father behaves to a son. And uh, the only avenue available is to call the MCA concerned and discuss with him the necessity to go slow. Like for Embu, surely. We, have, we, we, have, we are not done with the issues of around the governor. Then we start another fire around CEC members. Whatever the reasons, whatever the justifications, I think it would help to just tone down and also facilitate 
facilitate the healing process of the county. Because Embu is not our city. We are only trustees. We are only stewards on behalf of the people of Embu. So really, if it burns in our hands, the, the we, we, we will be like a caste leadership. We will be like a caste leadership. It is, it is, it is uh, not too good, Motegi. But in the last financial year. Can you go to a bit to, to your personal experience? Yes, uh, there are lots of questions from uh, Embu uh, members. Mm -hmm. People asking questions here, which, uh, in my fair judgment, belong to the governor about allocation of monies to which water by the governor, monies uh, paying of nurses, clinical officers, uh, all manner of questions here directed at the speaker. But uh, I don't know whether they belong to you, Speaker. I think they are governor uh, <laughs> questions. Uh, I, I think I will not uh, want to disassociate myself from yes. the leadership of Embo. Yes. What I can handle, yes. I will be able to handle. Yeah. Because, again, the number of uh, Embo people out there seeking answers to too many questions, they are th the numbers are high. Yes. And you cannot also, you know, every time you get the opportunity to talk to the people, not just in the studio, but also out there, and they ask you questions about roads and water, you can't tell them, oh, no, you go and go and ask the governor. And the governor is not there at the moment. So what you are telling the person is to go home dissatisfied with the entire government, which you are part and parcel of. I see that you want to take fire for... We'll get back to that, some of let's it. Let's but let's look at uh, your yeah, own yeah. mystery. Yeah. The mystery of oh, the, the Embu speaker. What exactly happened? You came to Nairobi, the last we saw you, you had left the hotel, hotel and uh, the next you were in some hospital. In a nutshell, what exactly transpired? Some clarity for the public. Can we leave that story? You, no, always, you always have difficulty around this matter. The thing is, were you kidnapped? But we cannot. David Makari at Motegi. The abduction that happened was a traumatizing affair. Has been uh, made to look like a comedy by quite a number of people. It is a matter I would want to rest. And because the investigations are still going on, I just want to hope that whoever financed it, whoever masterminded it, whoever planned it, achieved what he wanted to achieve. If we were not on camera, and I let you in into some of the things that happened in, um, to me, then uh, you would be ashamed to even have imagined that it was a self-abduction. Can we please leave it Self-abduction? That was the theory. Well, that's a theory, but definitely that wasn't according to you, right? It was not. So why can't you tell us? The truth, Mate, you came with your... You had some work you were doing at uh, Utali. You left the hotel. You are called. Actually, somebody called you. Gentlemen, can you leave Definitely there are things which are in your knowledge. And those which you do not know what happened to you, as far as we can tell in the accounts you've given. Yeah. So tell us what, you what was in your knowledge? Motegi and Makali. Can we leave that story altogether? Let me, let, me, let me finish my recovery processes, then we can discuss that when I'm proper. Well. That, that uh, matter would ha take the appearance of attempting to cover up something. Yes. I have nothing to cover up. I have nothing to disclose. Let me tell you, David, why, why I am taking that route. Yes. From the moment they picked me up from uh, that hotel, too many things happened to me, to my health, to my confidence, my psychological life altogether. A lot of mockery has happened. Some uh, persons have even mocked my mother in the process. And at the end of the day, it's taken a lot of counseling to put me into shape. Obviously, from this show, your viewers and your listeners and your fans want to know 
the details of what happened. I want to spare those details until the police finish their work. Has anybody been charged with respect to that uh, abduction? They charged somebody, but the charges are being uh, withdrawn. I have been explained to the police, have taken time to sit me down to explain to me why they are withdrawing the charges. But also this abduction has also me allowed me to see the two faces of, uh, of the Kenyan police because the self-abduction theory was a creation of one wing of the police force. Another wing uh, came on board and uh, dug into the matter and uh, made their findings to the, to the DPP. David, one of the things I also realized is that the police have the capacity to do a lot of work if they want because they really dug into, into this thing. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell you, if I had abducted myself or made, created that kind of scene or comedy, yes. I would be in jail today. Those guys have the equipment and they have the manpower. Yes. Yeah. But the police have, uh, the DPP has said uh, there was an attempt to discharge the suspect, the police yes. officer was. Uh, yes, yes. And uh, the DPP has refused. Are you satisfied with the actions so far undertaken? No, I don't think it's the DPP who has refused. It's the court that declined uh, the to attempt. Uh, it to withdraw yes. the charges? Yes. Th that's the DPP's problem. I don't want to get into it. Yeah. yeah. But are you satisfied with the progression of that investigation? Ah, very. Because I treat, I get weekly briefs in terms mm -hmm. of how well they are. Yeah. yeah. In fact, it's um, the beauty about it is why I, why I'm not willing to talk about it is that close to 80 percent of the work is done. I believe so. And what is being developed is now an excess of the, the who, who 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 told who what who gave who what and how much. And then uh, it's just a small thing. So is it, was it politics? Uh, the theater. By it was political. Um, by Akapsa. Mm. From what now, what has been established. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. The, the, the let's leave alone the other details. Let's just get to the tip end of it. Yeah. You just found yourself by the roadside at Thika Road. Uh, uh, on Kiambu Road? I was, uh, the people who picked me, I meant to understand it was from uh, on Rimuru Road. Rimuru Road. Yeah. And they took you to the hospital? They took me to, no, to to the police station, mm -hmm. and then uh, from the police station to the hospital. Right. Yeah. Hmm. All right, we'll hope to get you back here to discuss <laughs> after <laughs> the investigations are complete and even and charges are being preferred uh, and uh, all the chips are in place. Maybe that then at that time, it, it will not be necessary because people will be in jail. Yes, but then the truth of the matter will have come out and the political motives yes. will have been established, uh, if at all. Then that way we will be having tea. Yes, yes, we hope to have that tea. Yeah. Uh, we're optimistic <laughs> that will happen. Now, there, okay, coming but, uh, back. But, to uh, but on that, uh, Makali, yes. uh, I, for, for I, I want to put something right, mm. uh, if you allow me a minute of it. Yes. When I was in hospital, my mother called me, and uh, she wanted to come and uh, now see me. I, I, of course, I assured her that I was okay. I was receiving proper attention. Then she asked me now, oh, so I'm coming. W what do I bring you? I said, Mom, uh, bring me Uji. I'll be good with Uji. Mm -hmm. Then at the same time, I think some journalists had also gone to the village. And of course, they wanted to get the reaction of my mother. Yes. And then, uh, of course, my mother said, oh, no, I talked to him this morning. And uh, he said I should actually take him Uji. And then now you can imagine the mockery that, oh, you know, this idiot abducted himself. Then when he even when uh, in hospital, the only thing he can miss is his mother's wood. <laughs> you know, it's very ridiculous. I'm sorry about you know, this. It's, it's extremely ridiculous. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, you it's know, I, 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 I listened to even some talk show guys and they said, surely, well, uh, probably maybe they are brothers of Jesus. They came the, from the same womb with, uh, with Jesus. That's why their mothers are more special. But I think your mothers are non gozons. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Well, a lot of uh, <laughs> supportive word coming in. If you're in Embo yeah. and you have a question for the Embo speaker or anywhere else uh, for that matter, uh, you have an issue in which you like clarification on what is happening in Embo and the speaker is here. Uh, the question people say, Congratulations, the speaker, you're doing a good job. Uh, let the governor carry his cross. Uh, others, somebody else says, you know, uh, 
supplying. We believe that one big problem is caused by speaker, uh, the speaker uh, in Embu. Uh, you know, you're a sober, articulate person. I'm really impressed. Keep it up, Robert from Eldred. Uh, then there is a question about uh, uh, reconciliation efforts yes. that have been made towards yes. uh, getting Embu back on its feet and forward. Yes. And you have snubbed those uh, t efforts. Uh, a question is asked, why did you snub the reconciliatory meeting called by Bishop Kathy of SEK? Is it about superiority? That is Wanja. Uh, I, I want to imagine that reference to that reconciliation meeting is the meeting that uh, the House of Bishops, the Bishops uh, Fellowship had called yes. during the second impeachment. And uh, the invitation was to the MCS then my invitation came late. And uh, the date of the reconciliation was the day preceding the impeachment motion. And uh, Makali, I am the speaker of the county until that day when I am not. And I have refused consistently, even during that time, I refused to be one face of the belligerents. I refused to be, and I told the bishops that much, I don't want to be in a meeting where it comes out like it is the governor on one side and the speaker on the other side. And I told them, if the purpose of the reconciliation is to stop the impeachment process, then call the MCS who are the impeachers, call the mover and the stakeholders of the motion and sit with them. Because when I am the speaker, I am the speaker of those who are impeaching and those who are against, or against the impeachment. So I, I did not want really to be one, one, one arm of the conflict, that it is now the speaker against Wambora. I, it is not, it, nothing could be further from the truth. And I told the bishops that much. I told them, look, you call the guys who are in, beach, in beaching, sit them, sit them down. If they accept to, uh, to, dis, to, to, to do away with the motion, fine and good. I cannot force any MCA to, 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 to move a motion or to drop a motion. One of the things you read there was that I am part of the problem. And, uh, you know, Makale, if I am the one who has glued 24 MCs together, yes, then I think I need to be proud of myself that I am actually a, power, a political powerhouse. In fact, it is alleged that you are the one who was fixing the numbers to make sure that they achieve the threshold required to impeach the governor. Then I need to be feared. <laughs> that is why you are feared. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish I had that power. Yes. I, I wish I had that power because then I would have fixed also several other things. Yes. Okay. I claim that you, you know, the corruption in the county assembly. Yes. And you are being alleged to be uh, accused of corruption. That you nominated six members of your family to, uh, to sit <laughs> during the TN nominations. Wow. I think then my family is very big and yes. very blessed. But you know, yeah. I, I think uh, let us be, be fair to ourselves and to the processes. I could uh, name for you the nominated uh, MCS yeah. and then challenge uh, even the devil to pick out a relative from the list because uh, TNA has, uh, I think, seven nominated MCS. Seven or I think nine. The, the, the total number of nominated MCS is 13. Yes. There are those from TNA, there are those from APK, there are those from uh, NAC Kenya. Yes. I have heard it that uh, I was also the one nominating in APK, and I was also the one who was nominating in NAC Kenya. Then I think uh, uh, too much power is being ascribed to me. So is that there's nothing you can own up to uh, now? Surely, how uh, do you how in the what, 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 so what, that what, that what can you say in response to such a malicious allegation? Yeah, that's without basis. Okay, yeah. let's move on to yeah. the future as yeah. we come to the end of this uh, discussion. Yeah. You and Wambora, yeah. your core, your key to the functioning of that uh, county. Yes. Uh, are we looking forward to any rapprochement, uh, rapprochement to resolve the dispute so that Embu can move forward? The, let me put the record straight. Um, I fully invested myself and my resources to Ambora's election as governor. That is one. 
Two, Wambora himself knows that I have no personal problem with him. Three, I will not subscribe to the school of thought that government business can be love business. Can be? Love business. Love. That, love, that we go to positions of power to exercise love for one another, to praise one another, to close our eyes when wrongs are committed, to shut up when you should be speaking. And uh, the beauty about the whole scenario is that whenever I have felt Wambora has gone overboard, I have sat him down when we were talking. And I have told him, Governor, look, things are not moving right. And the MCAs are getting agitated. And the public is getting agitated. Unfortunately, on all the occasions I have sat with the governor, even the issues we agreed on have not been resolved. But what I have had to counter every day are some of the allegations that you have just read that there is corruption in the assembly. Surely, if there is corruption, Motegi, we don't even have to bother looking for it. The report of the Auditor General is going to be out very soon. We will see where corruption is. And those who are uh, named to be corrupt who will have to face the law. I have been accused previously, uh, last year, that when the assembly was recruiting, that I had recruited uh, out of 57 positions, 51 positions, and recruited 35 bearers. We invited an audit. There were only 40, 14. Bearer Northern, Bearer South, 14. The rest were embos. When that audit came, everybody shut up. Even a court case that had been filed in uh, a petition that had been filed in court was silently withdrawn. And I kept quiet about it. I didn't follow it up. But I think we need to also grow up and mature politically so that we stop looking at leadership and politics in terms of uh, tribes, in terms of who, who comes from uh, which tribe and who comes from which uh, royal, I don't know what. In your understanding, yes. having been there for this year since yeah. you elected, yeah. you say you have been sitting with the governor. Yeah. What do you think is his major problem? Uh, I think, I think what you need to do, uh, David, one of these days, why don't you invite us and the governor together so that I also don't appear like I'm just bashing uh, somebody who is not there to defend himself, so yes. that we are just together, we engage constructively, yes. yeah. so that I also don't appear like to be on a... Be, be constructive. Yeah, yeah. 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 Be constructive. Yeah. Be constructive. I think, um, uh, quite honestly, our governor needs to sit down and um, appreciate the new dimensions in public leadership. The di new dimensions require uh, consultation, they require uh, pragmatism, they require accountability and transparency. Um, sometimes you'd will, you may not agree with everything that happens. But for example, if uh, our governor has a problem with the county assembly or with something that the county assembly has done, there is always a methodology of reaching out. Yes. Mutege, do you think Uhuru Kenyatta is a fool when he takes time every beginning of a session to sit over lunch with his side of the coalition and agree on the parliamentary agenda and secure the support of the members? Don't you think it is embarrassing, for example, that a TNA governor would be impeached by, among others, his leader of majority in the, in, in the, in the, in the county assembly. And really, the leader, the leader of majority is an old man. Uh, it, it, uh, it, he has been actually insulted in the past that he donated his head to me. I'm the one who thinks for him. <laughs> and, <you> know, <laughs> uh, the, the, the deputy speaker has also been, uh, been, um, been accused that I am the one who tells him, even sh who shows him where to sign that I think for him. I mean, surely, even if there was no respect for me, at least respect for people in positions of leadership will move any government forward. And uh, that is, in answer to your question, yeah. that is where Wabora needs to, to, to start off. I will answer to a question you asked yeah. about a reconciliation mm -hmm. meeting that mm -hmm. was organized in, uh, in Kisumu. I actually... Uh, 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 moved the governor to um, to do it. There was a, a resolution by the the liaison committee. The liaison committee is the committee of all chairmen of committees, 
and they were also getting concerned at the lack of development. And so they said, Speaker, call for us all the, all the county executive committee members so we sit down together and agree on how work is going to be done. Well, part of the concern was arising from the fact that uh, in the last financial year, only 3% of the development money had been utilized. You know, that's a shame for a county like Embu. Yeah. And to that, the Budget and Appropriations Committee also asked me, can you call the governor for us? Because I think he has never understood us. We want to sit down with him and we agree on how we will carry on with the budget making processes. And I actually caused the letter. Now, the politics took center stage. And two to three days before the retreat, uh, now information emerged that the speaker and the deputy speaker and the leader of my majority have been compromised to the tune of five million to take MCAs to Kisumu. And that information was relayed to the MCAs from the kitchen cabinet of the governor. So the MCA said, look, if the speaker, the deputy speaker and the leader of majority have actually auctioned us, then let them go to Kisumu. We will not go. So it didn't happen. So it didn't happen. It collapsed like that because of irresponsibility, because of lack of leadership. And I, I will tell you, these persons we call MCS are not just people picked from the streets. These are people who sold uh, goats and chicken and cows to compete with others and won elections. So really, even some little respect for them okay. will, will is likely to move the county forward. All right. Your last word? 30 seconds, because you are dealing with conflict situations, so I always leave the last word to parting shot. I think we are recovering from the turmoil. Embu is the land of opportunities, and uh, we are moving forward. It's too bad that we've passed the bit on over to other counties, uh, Transoya, Makueni, Machakos, and the like. But I think we, we are recovering very, <laughs> very well, and we are moving on well. Even where there are no bridges, they are going to be constructed. And we, okay. I, I, I am intent on, uh, as long as I'm there, seeing the county moving forward. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Thank Speaker you. Thank you. Uh, Kariuki Mate, uh, Embu County. This work to be done. He says that the flu that started in Embu should not spread it to other counties. Uh, wishing the counties and the county and governors the best of harmony with the speakers and county assemblies. We're looking at Embu politics and the speaker, who at one time was in mysterious disappearances. We tried to shed some light on that, but, well, we succeeded to some extent. Now let's go over to Aga Khan Academy for the balance of our, our breakfast show. Some good music there. <laughs>